Everyone loves a good haunted house. There's a reason these are always among the most popular rides at any amusement park. Nothing feels better than having the sweet bejesus scared out of you by a bunch of creepy ghosts. But it's not only amusement parks where you can find these places. They exist in the real world too. From the most haunted house in the United States to the gun baron's macabre ghosts, here's the 20 most haunted houses on earth. <sighs> Number 20. Kansas's Most Haunted House The story of what happened at Kansas's most haunted house will give you bad dreams for sure. People have said that it's the most haunted house not just in Kansas but in the whole country. The house on 2nd Street was built in the middle of the 1800s in the growing town of Atchison. It's had many owners over the years, including the family of a six-year-old girl named Sally, who died in the house after an appendicitis surgery went wrong. Sally's story didn't start getting local and national attention until the mid-1990s, when Tony and Deborah Pickman, who owned the house at the time, started having strange things happening to them, like Tony being attacked hearing voices they couldn't explain, and candles that were burning on their own. The Kansas Paranormal Group did a lot of research and found that Sally wasn't the only ghost in the house. There was also a middle-aged woman there who was said to have been behind the more frightening attacks. While some say Sally died during surgery in the house, others say that she was the illegitimate daughter of a well-known doctor and a slave and was left to die of an illness because her father didn't want the community to know about her. No matter what the real story is though, there's been many reports of ghosts and the spirit of Sally attacking people. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Winchester Mystery House, San Jose, California. In 1886, a mysterious woman named Sarah Winchester moved from New Haven, Connecticut to San Jose, California to start a new life. She bought a small eight-room farmhouse and started a small renovation project that would take about 36 years and $5.5 million in money of the time ending only when she died in 1922. When she was done, the Winchester Mansion was a modern marvel with indoor plumbing, multiple elevators, a hot shower, and central heating. It had more than 160 rooms, 40 bedrooms. No one really knows why Mrs. Winchester kept asking for changes to be made to her very big house. There are, of course, some spooky legends about it though. By far the most common story is that Mrs. Winchester was haunted by the ghosts of the people who had been killed by the Winchester rifle, which was made by the company that her late husband had started. After her husband died, a psychic told her that she'd have to move out west, buy a house, and keep building all the time to keep the ghosts away. Some theories say that she built the house like a maze to keep her ghostly tormentors away by making them get lost in its many complicated parts. In 1906, a big earthquake hit the Bay Area and it knocked down the top three stories of the house. It also damaged the other four stories. Some people think that Sarah Winchester took this as a sign from the spirits that she was too close to finishing. So she had the front half of the house that she hadn't finished yet boarded up. Even though it's open now, you can still see the damage from the earthquake. Number 18. Mudhouse Mansion Mudhouse Mansion is an empty house in Fairfield County, Ohio. It's at 4730 Mudhouse Road, just east of Lancaster. It's a very impressive place that's built into a hill and has a lot of smaller buildings around it. Mudhouse Mansion practically screams haunted house with its empty windows and lonely location. And it is one, which makes sense, I guess. It was built in the middle of the 19th century and is thought to be the most haunted home in Ohio. Many people who go to Lancaster, Ohio, including paranormal investigators, know about it. Even though there was a sign that basically said don't go in here, people still broke in and looked around. You can choose which of the local stories to believe. One story says that a government official who lived there after the Civil War and still had slaves locked them up in one of the outbuildings at night. And this person lived in the north, not the south. One night, the slave dug his way out, went into the house, and killed everyone there. Some other people say that the house is haunted by the ghosts of a more recent family that was killed there. Seems like there's plenty of possibilities for this ghostly place. Number 17. 
Lizzie Borden Fall River, Massachusetts. One of the most famous crimes in the United States happened at the Lizzie Borden House in Fall River, Massachusetts. You've probably heard the rhyme about the axe and the 40 wax, even if you don't know much about New England history. Andrew and Bobby Borden were killed with an axe in 1892. Andrew's daughter Lizzie, who was also Abby's stepdaughter, was tried for the crime but found not guilty. The trial was one of the most talked about news stories of the time. And even though Lizzie was found not guilty, people never really forgave her because they thought that she was the real killer. The current owner of the Lizzie Borden house started to see a lot of strange things. They would hear loud footsteps, the voice of a woman that didn't seem to be coming from anywhere, and laughs at odd times. The Lizzie Borden case may be one of the most famous real life crimes in the US, but we'll probably never know what really happened. Happened. There is a law firm in Boston that has all of her case files and paperwork, and they're still locked up to this day. Number 16. Bell Witch Farm, Adams, Tennessee. A state highway historical marker along US Highway 41 in Adams, Robertson County tells the story of Bell Witch, which may be the most well-known ghost story in Tennessee. John and Lucy Williams Bell, a wealthy couple with several children, moved from North Carolina to Middle Tennessee in 1804. At the time, Middle Tennessee was on the western edge of the US. Around 1816, the Bells learned that strange things were happening in their home. Over the course of a year or more, there were spooky sightings and strange noises that sometimes got so bad, the house shook like it was being hit by a storm. Soon after the spirit came, John Bell started to feel strange and painful things in his body. This ghost, or Kate as people called her, was often cranky. She took the covers off people's beds while they slept, bugged the slaves, and stopped Betsy Bell from marrying her sweetheart. When the spirit started to talk, it said prayers. tried to sound like local people, and argued about the Bible. It sang with the church congregation at weekly prayer meetings. John Bell died on December 20th of 1820 after going through a lot of physical pain. The local legend says that Bell had died because the ghostly woman had given him poison. After four years, the spirit finally left. The legend of the Bell Witch House lives on though. Number 15. House of Death, New York City. With a name like the House of Death, it's safe to say that this house has some strange history. The Mark Twain House, as it's also known thanks to one of its most famous occupants, looks like any other beautiful New York brownstone from the outside. It's right in Greenwich Village, which is a very nice area. In 1897, the first bad luck story about the Mark Twain House was recorded. Fred H. Andrew, a professional cyclist, ran into a young boy and broke his leg. Andrew was taken into custody by local police after the accident, which raises questions about what really happened with many thinking he wanted to kill the child in a moment of madness outside the haunted house. Mark Twain moved into the house of death three years later. Twain says that while he was living there, a number of bad things happened to him. He said that while he was living and working on the property, he met ghosts. But the story of the Lisa Nussbaum case may be the strangest one of all. In 1987, Lisa's mother called 911 to tell them that she was in trouble at home. She said that her six-year-old daughter was not breathing and needed to be taken to the hospital right away. But what the first responders saw when they first went into the house is straight out of a horror movie. It turns out that Lisa's father, Joel Steinberg, beat her, her brother, and her mother physically in horrifying acts of abuse. After the young girl died, neighbors say they saw many strange things, like lights flickering and shadowy people hanging around the house. Does this house drive people to insanity? Tell us what you think. Number 14, Franklin Castle, Cleveland, Ohio. It's easy to see why people think this big Victorian house is the most haunted in Ohio. Hans Tademan, who was known around Cleveland for being a cruel and abusive D-bag, built it in the 1800s. When several people in Tademan's family died in mysterious ways in the house, rumors started to spread. Emma, Tademan's daughter, was one of the people who died suddenly in the house. It looks like she died because of problems related to diabetes. Then his mother and three more of his kids died. Luis, his wife, also died. It was thought that she died of liver failure, but rumors spread that Tiedman was really to blame. 
There were also rumors that he killed other people in his family, like his niece, a possible daughter that he kept secret, and his mistress. When Tiedemann's wife died, he left the house soon after. Since these tragedies, the house has had many different owners, including a group called the German Socialist Party for 55 years. People in the area even say that the house was really a place where Nazi spies lived. Nazis and ghosts all in one house. In more recent investigations, things like human bones found in the walls point to wrongdoing, and there's plenty of suspects to choose from. Number 13. Morgan House Kalimpong Morgan House is different from all other cottages. There's been scary stories told about this bungalow that'll give you the chills. People say that the house is haunted by a certain Lady Morgan's ghost. People in the area say they can hear footsteps and high heels in the wooden hallways. If you still think it's just a story, you should know that there are people who have actually been to the cottage and seen her. For example, one woman who went to the place didn't even know about the ghost, but some things happened that made her worry and feel pretty damn scared. So how did it all begin? During the British rule of India, Morgan House was built in the style of a Scottish house. Mr. Morgan and his wife used to stay here. Mrs. Morgan killed herself by putting a rope around her neck and swinging from the chandelier. Then after that, the abandoned house was made into a guest house by adding onto it. Many British people used to spend their vacations in the hills in Kalipong. There had also been a landslide there long before the house was built. People say that the landslide buried a lot of people whose bodies couldn't be found and the mansion was built right up on top of those bodies. The bodies of the dead people stayed under the house, but maybe their ghost didn't. Number 12. The Lemp Mansion at St. Louis, Missouri because of its sad past, the Lemp Mansion in St. Louis is known as one of the most haunted places in the U.S. William Lemp, who owned a successful brewery, built the 33-room house in the 1860s. He killed himself in 1904 after the death of Frederick, his youngest of four sons. After a few more years, his wife also died in the house from cancer. Then in 1922, William Lemp Jr. killed himself with a gun in the same room as his father. And if that wasn't enough sadness for one place, William's third son, Charles Lemp, shot his dog in the basement and then killed himself in his room in 1949. In the same year, the house was sold and turned into a boarding house. That's when people started saying they saw ghosts. People have reported feeling burned and hearing doors slam. The Lemp Mansion is now a restaurant, an inn, and a place where events are held, but watch out for those sad ghosts on dark, misty nights. Number 11. Jean Harlow House in Los Angeles, California one of the best places to look for haunted houses is in LA, and this Bavarian-style home in Beverly Hills has a particularly horrible past. In 1932, it was home to the famous actress Jean Harlow and her abusive husband, Paul Byrne, who shot himself while standing in front of a mirror. Their butler found him, but instead of calling the police, he called MGM Studios. This led to a lot of rumors that it wasn't really a suicide. Many people thought that Byrne's ex-girlfriend did it, and that theory grew stronger when she jumped off a boat and drowned a few days later. Jean moved out after he died, but she died at the age of 26 just a few years later. But wait, it gets creepier. Jay Sebring, a famous hairstylist, bought the house in 1963. He lived there with his girlfriend Sharon Tate until she broke up with him and began a romance with Roman Polanski. They were still friends and they stayed that way until the Childs Manson cult killed them both. When Tate died, she was the same age as Jean Harlow. Creepy. Tate told a few friends about spooky things that happened in the house, and she even talked about it in interviews. For example, she once saw a creepy little man when she was sleeping alone in the master bedroom. Her friends say that she thought it was the ghost of Paul Byrne. She was so scared when she supposedly saw a ghost that she ran out of the room and saw a shadowy body hanging in the hallway with its throat cut. Over the years, there's also stories about two other people who died in the pool. Number 10. Velisca Axe House, Velisca, Iowa. On June 10th of 1912, just after midnight, a stranger with an axe opened the back door of a two-story wood house in the small Iowa town of Velisca. The next day, the town coroner tried to figure out what happened next. It seems this unknown murderer took an oil lamp from the dresser, lit it, and turned it down so low that it barely lit up the sleeping house. 
Still holding the axe, the stranger crept into the room where Joe Moore, 43, and his wife Sarah were sleeping. The man raised the axe so high above his head that it damaged the ceiling, then brought the flat end of the blade down on the back of Joe Moore's head, crushing his skull and probably killing him instantly. Then he hit Sarah before she could wake up or notice that he was there. Leaving the couple dead or dying, the killer went to the next door and killed the four more children as they slept with Joe's axe, which was probably taken from where Joe had left it in the coal shed. Then he went back and mutilated the bodies in a terrifying act of brutality. It's now Villisca's most popular tourist attraction. People can pay to spend the night in the house, and there's plenty of people who are interested. But that is a very morbid and spooky spot. And it's said that the screams of the Moore family can be heard at night. Number 9. The Whaley House, San Diego, California most people know that San Diego has beautiful beaches, good weather, and places to visit that are cultural and artistic. But people who are interested in the supernatural will also want to know more about San Diego, with its long and dark history, haunted places, spiritual encounters, and weird things that happen in general. The Whaley House is definitely San Diego's most haunted place. Even the story of how the Whaley House was built may seem as simple and innocent as any family story. Many people thought it would be haunted even even before it was built. Yankee Jim Robinson, a notorious thief, was hanged on this plot of land. This was one of the most well-known public executions in the town. A few years later, the house was where two of the Whaley daughters got married. George Bertolassi married Violet, who was the younger of the two. Even though she tried hard, the marriage was hard, and Violet ended up getting a divorce and feeling pretty sad about it all. She was so sad that she decided she couldn't live with the shame of a divorce. So on August 18th of 1885, she shot herself in the chest. Thomas, Anna, and their children Lillian, Thomas, Violet, and Francis, who were all part of the Whaley family, lived and died in the house, sometimes in violent ways. When the house was being fixed up, which happened several times in its history, workers and visitors said they could hear, see, smell, and meet strange and mysterious things. This house is so haunted that no one wants to buy it. Number 8. Amityville Horror House, Amityville, New York this haunted house might be one of the most well-known ones in the world. It's the Horror House in Amityville. At 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, New York, in 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. shot and killed six members of his own family. DeFeo, who was 23 years old, ran to a nearby bar and screamed for help, saying that his parents had been shot. A team was put together quickly, and when they went to look into it, they found that his parents and four younger siblings had indeed been shot to death. DeFeo said that it was a hit by the mob, so police were sent to protect him. But his story soon fell apart, and when asked, he admitted that he killed his whole family. DeFeo got six sentences of life in prison, and he's still in jail today. The house was put up for sale in 1975, but the new owner said that it had oozing walls of blood and ghostly voices, which were probably those of the young family who had been killed there. The house is for sale again for just under a million dollars, so if you are interested in death and have a lot of money, you could own this tragic piece of American history. Number 7. S.K. Pierce House this Victorian building, known as the S.K. Pierce House, is pretty creepy looking. And if it looks like the most obvious haunted house, you're right, it is the most obvious haunted house. People like Betty Davis, Norman Rockwell, and P.T. Barnum, who are all well-known, have lived here in the past 100 years or so. But some of the other people who used to live there are the problem. It's haunted by the ghosts of several people who died there and had bad things happen to them. A little girl who drowned in the backyard pond. A Finnish traveler who stayed there and was smoking when he fell asleep and was burned to death. A prostitute who worked there when it was a brothel and was killed while on the job. They look like shadowy people who move furniture and throw stuff. So if you don't mind all the death vibes and ghosts, then this might be the place for you. Number 6. Villa de Vecchi in Italy Villa de Vecchi, also known as Red House, is a 19th century mansion built by Count Felis de Vecchi. 
in the small village of Bindo. It's in the mountains east of Lake Como. The historic building has been abandoned and falling apart for decades. There's a story that a ghost lives in in the villa, and every night it plays the piano. One of the many stories about the villa says that it started to fall apart after the Count found his wife and daughter brutally murdered. After De Vecchi died, the building was left empty and began to fall apart. In the 1920s, occultist Aleister Crowley spent a few nights at the villa. It's said that his followers later used the house for satanic and orgiastic rituals, and that murders and suicides happened there. The outside walls of the Red House are now covered with vines, and inside, frescoes and tapestries have been vandalized or damaged by humidity. During an avalanche in 2002, big rocks came down the mountain and stopped just a few meters from the villa, saving it. The people there aren't sure if that was a good thing or not. Number 5. The White House, Washington, D.C. In 2009, Michelle Obama, who was then the first lady, told school kids that she and her husband, President Barack Obama, sometimes heard strange noises in the hallway at night. And sometimes, some members of the Obama family felt like something was chewing on their feet. These famous feet might have been nibbled on by the ghost of a long-dead White House pet. And some people think that the Obamas heard from the White House's most popular ghost, President Abraham Lincoln. The Obamas aren't the only ones who've lived in 1600 Pennsylvania. Avenue to say strange things happened there. Jenna Bush Hagar, the daughter of President George W. Bush, who was in office from 2001 to 2009, said that she and her twin sister Barbara once heard 1920s piano music coming from their bedroom fireplace. And Ronald Reagan, who was president from 1981 to 1989, told the story of how his dog barked wildly at the door of the Lincoln bedroom and refused to go inside. Reagan's daughter and her husband also said that they saw a ghost in the room. Winston Churchill, a famous British leader, said that he saw Lincoln's ghost when he stayed in the Lincoln bedroom. Lincoln, who was assassinated in 1865, never slept in the room, but it was his office. Number 4. The Joshua Ward House, Salem, Massachusetts. This big house in Salem, Massachusetts is called the Joshua Ward House, after the wealthy sea captain who built it. But the house isn't famous because of Joshua Ward, but because of a man who lived here before the Joshua Ward House was even built. The building that was there before belonged to George the Strangler Corwin who was the High Sheriff of Salem during the famous witch trials in Salem at the end of the 17th century. Corwin signed death warrants for witches at a time when Europe was starting to become more enlightened. He's personally responsible for the deaths of 19 innocent people he wrongly accused of witchcraft. Corwin died of a heart attack at the very young age of 30. Maybe these witches did curse him after all. People say that Corwin and the witches he killed come back to haunt the house where he used to live. They do this to get back at him for killing him. One person who claimed to be a witch used a legal injunction to stop Corwin's body from being buried until he got money to make up for Corwin taking back his house because of the witchcraft. He was able to do it, and people think that because Corwin's body wasn't buried for a long time, his spirit got stuck on this property. Number 3. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum in Weston, West Virginia when it opened in 1864, the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum was made to hold 250 people. In the 1950s, when the facility was at its busiest, more than 2,400 people were living there in overcrowded, cruel conditions. Some were even kept in cages. The asylum closed in 1994, and now there are stories that the souls of former patients are still there and roaming the halls. Today, the museum is in a few rooms on the first floor of the Kirkbride, which is the main building of the asylum. There's paintings, poems, and drawings made by patients in the art therapy programs. There's also a room with things like a straitjacket and a hydrotherapy tub that show the different medical treatments and restraints that have been used in the past. The tour guides wear blue dresses, a white apron, a white cap, and white shoes, which makes them look like nurses from the 1800s. Visitors can see the first floor of the Kirkbride on the shorter historical tour. On the longer historical tour, they get to see all four floors, the staff apartments, the morgue, and the operating room. There's two ghost tours in addition to the historical tours. Number 2. Merchant House Museum in New York, New York 
The Merchant's House Museum, which used to be called the Old Merchant's House, and the Seabury Treadwell House, is the only family home from the 1800s that's been kept in New York City, inside and out. Nearly 100 years ago, the Treadwell family lived in this house. Some people say they never left. Since the 1930s, when the house became a museum, staff, volunteers, visitors, neighbors, and even people just walking by have told stories of strange and unexplainable sounds, sights, and smells. Many people think that it's especially Gertrude Treadwell who's watching over her family home. Gertrude, the youngest of the Treadwell's eight children, was born in an upstairs bedroom in 1840. She never got married, and she lived here her whole life until she died at the age of 93 in 1933. She was the last family member to live in the home. When COVID-19 shut down the museum in 2020, Dan Sturges, a paranormal investigator, and Dr. Lee, a neuroscientist, started doing a lot of research based on the scientific method. They did this by using special equipment that was built for the house. The research is building a better understanding of the strange and interesting things they've seen at the merchant's house by using unbiased observation and planned experiments. Number 1. Los Feliz Murderer Mansion in Los Angeles, California during the middle of the 20th century, Dr. Harold Perelson and his family lived in this large Los Feliz home and seemed to be happy there. However, on the terrible night of December 6, 1959, he killed his wife while she slept with a ball-peen hammer and tried to kill his three children before drinking acid to kill himself. When he hit his oldest daughter in the head, she screamed, which woke up his other children who came into the hallway to see what was going on. During all the commotion, the children were able to get away. Before the murder-suicide, he was a successful doctor who invented a new type of syringe. He put most of his money into researching and making it, but he didn't get the rights to it, which led investigators into thinking that he had money problems. A page from Dante's Divine Comedy was open on his bedside table, which was another creepy detail. It was sold to the Enrique family two years later. They used it as a storage unit, and their son did the same until 2016, where he sold it to a couple who planned to fix it up. But it seems to have scared them away because it's on the market again in a few years. Photographers say that when they get close to the house, they feel the need to run away. And I totally understand why. What's the most haunted place you've ever been to? Do you believe in ghosts or not? Let us know in the comments below. Also, see you next time.